How did you get involved with Papadopoulos and Sons? Uh, the writer, director, producer, whose name is Marcus Marcou, um, is a friend of mine. We trained at uh, drama school together uh, in 1999. Uh, so I've known him since 98, 99. He approached me. We'd stayed in touch. We were good friends. Uh, I had done a short film of his a couple of years previously, and I'd also done one of his plays uh, and worked on a second play. And he approached me and said, I've, listen, I've written this film and I've written this role. I'd really like to play it. And I read the script and thought it was a great, fantastic, funny, moving, charming script and loved the character Rob, uh, which he uh, had wanted me to play. This uh, kind of self-serving, uh, ruthless uh, corporate accountant wasn't the kind of thing I normally get to do. And it was, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a kind of amusing role as well. So I said, Marcus, I'm there. Count me in. What kind of films did you, you mentioned you did a film before. What, what kind of short film did you do with Marcus Marcou? He wrote a film called The Last Temptation of Chris. Uh, uh, about a kind of marriage guidance counsellor um, who uh, is kind of uh, wrestling with his own unresolved issues. And uh, he, it was his um, degree film from his filmmaking course that he was doing at the time. I, I'd already worked on two of Marcus's plays, so I knew how good a writer he was and suspected he would also be a terrific director, which he turned out to be. Uh, so I jumped at the chance to work with him again on Papadopoulos and Sons. Your character Rob has some really funny scenes. Did you just make up the blocking as you went along, or was it more specific? Some of it, I guess, we made up uh, as we went along. Yeah, the, the scene where he, um, you know, he talks about... Uh, where he sort of sings the jingle, the ad, the advertising jingle from right. this company, which he's just helped to uh, liquidate. Uh, yeah, we just sort of, I just sort of did it, and Marcus went, yeah, that's exactly what I hoped you'd do. And I said, oh, okay, fine, well, I'll do it like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think in an ideal world, when you're, when you're making a film, shooting a scene... The actor comes with some ideas, the director comes with some ideas, uh, you show each other the things you had in mind, and between you, uh, you know, you either decide that, yeah, this is definitely the way to go, or else you sort of say, well, let's try like that, and well, let's try like this, and it just, it, you know, it varies. I think you just sort of trust your instincts really on those things and hope that your instincts are in line with your directors. Was there a line in particular that you were really fond of or um, a scene? You have a lot of good one-liners. Well, Marcus, Marcus says that um, this phrase which Rob uses a couple of times, uh, dear sweet mother of God, uh, he says that that's something that I... I say, and um, I'm not denying that. Uh, I think I'm probably aware that I do uh, occasionally use the phrase, dear sweet mother of God. Um, so he, he kind of appropriated that. Do you Sorry? Feel like there was a lot of you put into the character because you, Marcus knows you so well. I'd, I'd hope to say no, because I don't think Rob, I mean, that's, well, actually, I think that's the mark of good writing is that you can take a character who is superficially unlikable but you end up, against your better judgment, you know, feeling sort of drawn to him or, or, or maybe not, you know, absolutely rooting for the guy. But, uh, you know, it, it kind of runs counter to your initial instincts about the character when you first see him. You think, oh, this guy's, you know, this guy's a dick or something. But then as you kind of get to know him, you sort of begrudgingly sort of think, actually, I wouldn't mind hanging out with this guy, periodically. Uh, I don't think I'd like to marry him. And, uh, well, Marcus also said that filming took place in just 24 days. Um, yeah. What was it like shooting with such a tight schedule? 
Did it did it affect shooting at all? No, I don't think so. I mean, it, I think nowadays we're all so used to shooting to tight schedules. Uh, and I and I, you know, I, and I, it requires a certain amount of preparation and. Um, you know, either yourself or or working with the director and the actors, and we did have a chance to do a little bit of rehearsal and talk about some scenes. Um, but uh, I, you know, I have to admit, I f- I find that on productions where you're up against it um, in terms of the schedule, time, finance, whatever, uh, I find that crews tend to work more efficiently um there's less wastage and people are really kind of focused and because everyone knows that you know the lead actors are not being paid hundreds of thousands of pounds uh there's a kind of camaraderie which you maybe sometimes lack on bigger stuff uh you know the 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 kind of differentiation between the top of the pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid isn't so steep as you get sometimes. And you can actually get an awful lot done um, in a day's work and uh, without uh, having, you know, sacrificing quality. So uh, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't too tough. I don't remember it being too tough. I remember it being, you know, a lot of fun, actually, and laughing a lot. That's good. Was there anyone you got along with in particular? Not really, no. Well, apart from Marcus and Stephen Delane and Frank Delane and uh, uh, Cosima, uh, no, that was that was a joke. Uh, in, in everyone, uh, I genuinely, genuinely um, had a fantastic time, and we all got on terrifically. I knew Stephen. I'd done. Uh, one film with Stephen. Maybe I did two films with Stephen. God, I can't even remember. remember but I worked with Stephen before, um, and I knew Selena Cadell, and I'd worked with Cosima before, uh, and um, I'd worked with Alex Hansen, who plays the Norwegian uh, banker, um, and I knew a couple of other people, Marcus. Um, the DOP had shot um, Marcus's short film, so I knew a bunch of people actually, and um, it was a really nice atmosphere. So it just feels very comfortable going to work. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just exactly. It was a really nice set to arrive on and, and start working. Well, a big theme in this film is success. What is success? So, do you? What is success for you personally? Well, I suppose, you know, well, the, one of the traps of my job, although of course it's not unique to my job, is getting one's entire fulfillment from one's work. Um, but you certainly, uh, you know, I certainly derive a significant amount of my fulfillment from the work I do. And that fulfillment stems from doing work which I find interesting and which I enjoy and which I'm proud of the finished result. And so by and large, even setting aside the necessity to feed my children and pay the bills, um, I try as as far as possible to do work that, that um, falls into that category of, of interesting and challenging and enjoyable Success is happiness, and um, and happiness can you know derive from several different things. But certainly, uh, you know, enjoying going to work and feeling you know uh, ha- proud of what's achieved when you go to work that seems like two pretty good starting points. Was there a certain point in your career when you felt like you'd made it as an actor, like? I think I can stick to this. Well, certainly not made it, no. Uh, but could continue doing it. I'm not sure, to be honest. I mean, for, for, there is, you know, there are still days where I go to work and I think, God, I've, how, I don't, I can't believe anyone employs me. I'm just hopeless today. I can't, just kind of can't get in the zone. I can't 
you know, I can't, I just feel, so some days I feel like I can't do it, you know. But you kind of, you, you, you get yourself through it somehow. Uh, it ebbs and flows for me. It ebbs and flows. I mean, I know it's what I want to do and, it, and, and I can't imagine another job that would give me as much satisfaction as this one does. But I suppose, you know, the corollary to that is that something which can give you that greater sense of fulfillment also has the ability to smack you down on your ass and... And my, and I'm so, I'm sorry to say that from time to time my job does do that. And on those days, yeah, you do. You think, God, I'll, I'll never be employed again. Um, but you know, somehow you keep on going. Um, but but I but having said that, you know, I'm not in any way feeling sort of self piteous. I know how lucky I am that I get paid to do something which I enjoy so much, and. Um, that a lot of people would rip my arm off uh, to be in my shoes. So mostly I feel immense gratitude um, punctuated by bouts of extreme terror. Hmm. What is it about it that you like so much? What is it about what, sorry? Acting. Uh, pretending to be someone else. <laughs> um, and again, that's not in like, I don't know, that's not a sort of self-loathing thing at all. It's just... I, I suppose, you know, it harks back all of us when we were kids, you know, ran around the, the house or the garden or the playground pretending to be someone else, whether it was a spaceman or Robin Hood or a princess or whatever the hell it was. Mm. And that, that thing of being able to pick up a stick and pretend it's a ray gun, actors have some sort of arrested development, I suppose, which means that we never quite grew out of that. What are your upcoming projects? I, I think you mentioned that you were in New York. Yeah, I'm shooting a film at the moment, a film called Angelica, which is an adaptation of a, a novel set in uh, Victorian London. But uh, it was written by an American. It's being, uh, it was adapted and directed by an American uh, and so we are filming in New York. I'm playing a character called Joseph. Uh, he's the husband. It's about a husband and wife who have a, a small child. And uh, there are various uh, strains on their relationship uh, and various forces which uh, impact on their marriage and uh, on the triangular relationship between the three of them and uh yeah it should make an interesting film how would you describe shooting in the u.s compared to britain uh the the, uh, the onset food is much better some of the crew are coming to london and i keep saying hey guy i tell you when you see the onset catering you're going to be really disappointed because <laughs> it essentially amounts to you have a choice between tea bags or freeze-dried coffee <laughs> and if you're really lucky, there'll be some custard cream biscuits, and that's it. Why? What do they give to you in America? Man, they cook. They actually cook things. <laughs> I'm talking about lunch. That's a whole different other thing. You know, you like lunch. We break for lunch. We go over. There's this delicious lunch cooked by these lovely guys. We sit down. I'm talking about the. Oh, Ed, uh, we've got five minutes while we line the shot up, and I wander downstairs to the craft service. And not only will there be a smorgasbord of sweet and savory snacks, uh, you know, and I'm not just talking M&Ms and potato chips. There's cheeses and salamis and, you know, stuff, you know, butters and one layer, fruit. There's, they also, at least once a day, cook like a soup or some, like, you know, uh, uh, casserole or stew or ch I mean it's crazy it's crazy that's good to hear um well I think that's enough for the interview but um thanks so much uh for meeting up with me I know you're really busy my pleasure okay uh, lovely to talk to you yeah it's really nice to meet you um so thanks so much and uh good luck with the rest of your film thank you very much Alexandra take care